It's almost 100 degrees in Houston, and you may be wondering why I'm outside with my laser. Well, we just had a hurricane and people have been without power for over a week. I was in the middle of making this video and thought it might be good to show you the versatility of this laser. To do this, I'm outside to make a couple of projects for my friends and family, so you'll see some of the projects done out here, with a bunch more done right here inside my shop before we lost power. Let's be honest, you're not gonna make a ton of money engraving five to 10 coasters or some random jewelry, especially if you're running it off of the back of your truck. But there are ways that a machine like the F1 Ultra can help you to turn a profit for your side hustle or business. I'm following up on my previous video for this laser, which was a quick overview of the functionality of the F1 Ultra, showing you a bunch of different materials you can engrave and cut with this laser. In that video, I asked you to give me some ideas for what you'd like to see engraved. I'll get to those in just a minute, but first let's check out this project that I engraved during the intro of this video. I think these hurricane kits will come in handy to pass the time next time one rolls through. This laser is great for doing more than just flasks and coasters though. This laser can engrave tons of materials. I'm gonna rewind back when I had power in my shop and show you a few of the other projects that I made. Here I am. Throughout this video, I'm gonna show you several projects using a bunch of different material types. For example, you already know that this can engrave and cut wood. Cutting and engraving wood is going to use the diode laser functionality in this unit, which is a 20 watt laser. I promise I'm not gonna keep talking about coasters because they're not huge money makers, but you can use the embossing feature to do some really cool designs on metal, slate, and wood. Here's some examples of how you can do embossing on slate to really make your coasters different from what others are offering. You should know that doing embossing does require you to not only take a few extra steps, like setting up a depth map for your design, but the engraving time is gonna be significantly higher because of the multi-layer processing of embossing. Xtool software is actually very good for converting your image into a depth map, and the process is pretty simple. You just dump your design into the software and go through the process of converting it into a depth map. Then you'll need to make sure that your work surface is set to embossing. If you are set up as a flat image, you won't get the results that you're looking for. Just ask me how I know. So you'll wanna make sure that you select the embossing uh, layer or the embossing function. To do one coaster, it took over an hour. So this isn't actually something that you're going to batch out very quickly, despite the speed of this laser. You're essentially having to do the engraving 100 to 300 times, depending on the amount of layers and complexity of your design. I did a test on this green acrylic to see how it did in cutting. The acrylic is about three millimeters thick and it took about five passes to cut through. I could have set the speed down and taken less passes to essentially get this to the same thing, but I didn't want the acrylic to melt or burn. You can see that it cut right through the acrylic just as expected. So can it cut and engrave acrylic? Yes, it can. The F1 Ultra can etch, emboss, and even cut metal. For cutting, it can safely cut 0.4 millimeter brass, 0.3 millimeter stainless steel, and 0.2 millimeter aluminum. The one thing that you have to consider when cutting is how the metal can warp with too much heat. And while it can cut metal, if that's the primary function that you're looking for in a laser, I'd recommend going with something like a plasma CNC, which can cut much thicker metal. For one-off jobs like cutting thin metal sheets, this machine could work. I had these ashtrays that I wanted to make for some clients and this laser can engrave both metal and wood really well. To do something like this, you can either engrave each separately or you can set them in different layers for the various materials that you're wanting to engrave. You'll wanna make sure that the height is set for each layer you're wanting to engrave. So the height of the metal in this case is about a half inches lower than the surface of the wood. I think these things turned out pretty awesome and the engraving on the metal uh, really makes it unique and uh, something special. This is something that I teased in the last video with challenge coins. You can emboss or deboss metal coins like these challenge coins. I have a couple of different types like in this case we have the silver one or the brass one. You have to be careful with the coins that you select for your engraving because some are just colored on the surface. So when you actually go to engrave them, you get an almost black engraving once you go through the first couple of layers. 
I'll leave links to the ones that I recommend in the video description. Because engraving like this is pretty time consuming, like the slate examples I showed earlier, I'm only gonna show you a couple of examples in this video. There are other YouTube videos that go into depth on how to do the embossing with the F1 Ultra. Some great videos by Embrace Making, Chad with Chad's Custom Creations, and Justin Laser cover a lot of the details on this process. I'll link to those videos below. One thing that I promised I would test in my last video is this conveyor. The conveyor has a push button or a foot pedal to advance the project, but honestly throughout my testing I never had to use either. The conveyor belt just advanced through the process to do the next engraving, and once it sensed there was no more pieces on the belt, it stopped the process. I'll say that the process was not flawless. The camera is really sensitive to reflective surfaces or dark materials that don't provide much contrast between it and the conveyor belt. I wasn't able to get a good test on these metal tags using the smart features of the conveyor belt because they were too reflective. While the conveyor belt is a really cool feature, one that I think that some people will get a lot of use from, most of my stuff isn't batch work and I'm too particular about the placement of the designs. This actually drove me crazy a bit because the software aligned a few pieces slightly off center. I think this is something that will improve as Xtool continues to improve their software, but for now this process still has a few things that they would really need to work out better for me to use it. Still, having the ability to use a conveyor with a fiber laser is a very nice feature to have access to, especially once the software improves. However, while the batch processing was a bit of a miss for me, I was really impressed with how the conveyor function worked with longer pieces. I used the AI function in Xtool Creative Space and had to generate a face of an old lady with wrinkles. Then I used the conveyor to engrave this photo paper and it really turned out fantastic. I mean, just look at the details in her face. If you're already an Xtool customer, you're probably familiar with the next accessory that I'm gonna talk about. This is the same rotary that you've seen in my other Xtool reviews. This is the RA2, and yes, it works with the F1 Ultra. Each of the machines uses a slightly different plug, but they're all included in the box. You plug in the rotary and position the rotary where it aligns with the center line in the software. Use the camera to align your design, and then you can use the chuck or rollers to engrave your curved pieces. Chad with Chad's Custom Creations has a really good video on this rotary, and he shows some of the different colors you can achieve on stainless steel by using the diode laser on the F1 Ultra. His video is actually pretty funny also, so you'll wanna check that video out. One function that we're not really able to test yet because they're still working on the beta testing is the curved surface engraving without using the rotary. You may have seen some promotional videos where they were engraving a round surface of a vase without using the rotary. If you're familiar with this feature on the S1 or P2, Xtool is really good with their software and have accomplished this with both of those machines. And I've actually done some tests and videos on that, so it, this, the process should be pretty similar. I think they're really trying to make sure that it's fully tested and accurate before releasing to the public. I realize that some of you asked me to test this function in this video, but when it becomes available, I will be testing it. I have no doubt that it will be as good as the curved surface tests that I did with both the P2 and S1 machines. I really wanted to try out the curved surface engraving on a golf club because someone requested that I try to engrave a golf club in my previous video. Well, you can see that because it's treating it as a flat surface, the image is a bit skewed on that golf club. But once again, once they release this feature, like it is on the other machines, I know that this is gonna be a really cool feature. I've been very impressed with their technology on my other machines for this type of thing. I've seen mixed reviews on the exhaust for this laser. While it's recommended that you connect the laser to an exhaust system, I'll have to tell you that if you're planning to do any slate or rock coasters, that this thing is gonna to generate tons of fine dust and clog up your exhaust fan. Once this happens, it's gonna be very difficult to get good suction on the exhaust system. And in fact, it may end up beeping at you and letting you know that it's not detecting any uh, flow. So after I ran several coasters, my exhaust system really stopped working properly. You wanna make sure that you have a backup filter or backup filters and clean out your filters pretty regularly. That said, because of the way that this laser is built, there are these little openings where smoke and exhaust and dust can escape. 
while I was engraving some wood pieces, I had to put some tape around the edges because the shop was really starting to fill up with smoke, and that's even with the exhaust on. I don't think it's safe to assume that you can run this in your living room like some of the promotional videos out there. Of course, I always recommend putting your laser in a safe place. But I guess if you're running it outside right after a hurricane, the only thing that you have to worry about and be concerned with is the machine overheating due to the sun. I have to say in all of my tests that I ran on this laser, I've been very impressed with the quality of engraving. If you're doing more standard engraving, the speed of the machine is fantastic. If you're wanting to do challenge coins and embossing, plan to have it run a bit slower to get through all of the layers, but the machine is comparable to the other fiber lasers out there. As I said in my last F1 Ultra video, having two different laser types under one hood is a nice feature, and it opens up a ton of possibilities. Take a look at my initial F1 Ultra video here to learn more about this machine. Thanks for watching.